You're listening to King Jesus Radio, the official podcast of New Living Way Church. You can stream all Sunday services, Wednesday night Bible studies, and much more. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Sometimes we may not know how to react to certain issues, certain things that are going on in our lives, or just situations that we face and go through every day, right? And, you know, there's just some things that are out of our control, some things it's just, you know what, you could be having a great day and all of a sudden be around a couple of people that are just not having a great day, and all of a sudden you find yourself not having a great day. It just happens, right? And most of the time we're probably more guilty of the one bringing someone else down, but that's, we're not talking about that today, you know, but we're all guilty of it in some way, right? But you know, there, there's just things many times in our lives that we cannot control. But one of the things that we can have hope and peace and comfort in is knowing that God is always in control. And no matter what is going on through our lives, He is faithful to the vow, to the covenant that He made to us. And He will finish that work that He started in our lives. So no matter what you face or go through, no matter how you feel or where your thoughts are at, just know that God is for you still today, amen? And He is still doing the work. And even today, those that are running out there, He didn't leave them, He's still there with them too. Because I know that because He followed me and he, he was with me through that time. And you know what, but He brought me back. And He's able to reach them today. And today, that's why we're still praising Him and glorifying Him, amen? Because He is a faithful God. Now there is a man here by the name of Hezekiah that was brought out in the morning. And he received a disturbing letter from an enemy. And basically telling him, hey man, you know what? I'm going to, you know, you, we're going to come after you guys. We're going to get you. And don't think that your God is going to save you because we've demolished many other nations that had many gods and none of them came to their aid. So what makes you think you're any different? You know, so this news, I mean, though Hezekiah knew who his God is, it still, you know what? It still affects me. We're human, right? We still can get sad, we can still be fearful, we still have, you know, doubts, we can still have all these different things. That's normal. How many of us still get scared, right? Amen. Amen. You hear that noise in the night, who's that? You know, well, wait a minute, you're a Christian, you're not supposed to get scared. What are you talking about? I'm scared, man. The only difference with us, what we do, that doesn't happen to me very often, but I'm scared. Unless it's a spider, man, then I'm there. It's got me. But what I do is we got to bring it before the Lord, Amen. That's the difference. That's the, that's the change in our hearts and lives today is that we know God. So we don't have to hold on to that fear. We don't have to walk in that fear. We don't have to walk in that anxiety or that doubt or those indecisions or that just many times in that hardship. We know we're not alone because Christ is with us. God is with us and we know to whom we can turn to. And so in, in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 14, this is what Hezekiah did in his response to the news that he got. It says, after Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it, he went up to the Lord's temple and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed this before the Lord, O Lord, God of Israel, you are enthroned between the mighty cherubim. You alone are God of all the kingdoms of the earth. You alone created the heavens and the earth. Bend down, O Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Listen to Sennacherib's words of defiance against the living God. It is true, Lord, that the kings of Assyria have destroyed all these nations, and they have thrown the gods of these nations into the fire and burned them. But of course the Assyrians could destroy them. They were not gods at all, only idols of wood and stone shaped by human hands. But now, O Lord our God, rescue us from his power, that all the kingdoms of the earth will know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Amen. See, this is what Hezekiah did, and this is what we are to do. Yes. When you got that mountain, when you got those valleys, when you got these things that just seem impossible, we got to come to the Lord and bring it before Him. Amen? Amen. Did you get that bill you didn't expect? Bring it before the Lord. Amen? Amen? Did you get that letter or report you didn't expect? Bring it before the Lord. Amen? Because He is greater. He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And let me tell you something. He's living. Amen? Yes. He's alive. Yes. He is not a statue. He is alive today. And He is alive in you today. You put your faith in Him. You are Spirit-filled. Holy Spirit-filled today. you got the power of God in you. And all things.
things are possible in Christ Jesus. So when we're weak, oh, that's our strongest because he is strong in us. Amen. He is strong in us. Praise God. So praise the Lord. So this song today, we're going to be declaring that it's called Lion of the Lamb. But there is a part in here that says, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? And I just, this part has just been in my heart all week, man. It's just been continually, and you know, through my shortcomings or through the battles or just the fires or just normal day life. But what kept reminding me was, but who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop him from doing the work in your life? You know that not even you can stop the Lord from doing the work in your life. You can hinder it. You can slow it down. You can go through some detours. But it doesn't mean that God's going to stop doing the work he started in you. Amen? So no matter what you're pressing through or believing God for today, when we sing that part, let me have this encourage you. Declare it with your heart. Amen? Amen? Whatever you're carrying today, give it to the Lord. And remind yourself, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Amen? Amen. Father, we just thank you this morning, Lord. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor, Lord. For you truly are amazing, wonderful, and awesome. And Lord, we know that there is no other name given under heaven to which we shall be saved but the name of Jesus. And Father God, today, Lord, we thank you. For we don't have to fear, Lord. Because, Lord, our trust is in you, Father God. So today, Lord Jesus, we thank you for touching our hearts this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we're able to know you, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, that it's in that committed relationship to you that we're able to be a light and a hope in this world, Lord, because of the miracle that you did through our hearts and lives, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time together, Lord, and we bring, Father God, this praise and worship before you, Lord, because it's done unto you, Lord. And Father, we come together today, Lord. Let it be a pleasing aroma to you, Father. Hallelujah. But let it be more than the songs that we sing. But let it be our hearts of praise and worship, Lord. And our lives and how we live and what we do. Because all the glory and honor and praise be unto you, Father. For to you be the glory, Lord. We thank you for what you've done, what you're continuing to do. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you yes. for the joy of the Lord in our strength. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord some glory this morning. Amen. Reach your neighbor this morning and you get a chance to say hello today. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. God is so good. He is so faithful. And we can trust him through everything. He knows our needs, and you know what? He ministers to each one of us individually. Praise God. So I don't know what you go through. I don't know what you face. I don't know how your week was. I don't know how your night was. I don't even know how your morning was. But amen. And we can trust him through it all because he is faithful and he is good. And you know what? No matter what may go on or what we may face or what goes in our world today, there's still hope today. Still Jesus. Amen. A God who loves the world so much that he died for the sins of the world. That they may have life. That we may have life. That we may know him today. So just such a blessing and an honor and a privilege to be able to be a part of the work that God is doing. Amen. So praise God for that and just being able to come together and just praise him. Amen. But it's more than just singing songs. It's, it's understanding the words that we're singing, the things that we're saying, the things that we're declaring. You know, music is a great gift. Amen. It is a blessing. I love music, you know, but I know that music can also play on my emotions. Amen. And we have to be careful with the music, you know, and, and because it can, can make us, give us the high times. It can bring us in the low times. It could take me back to some times. Amen. You know, so it's, it's, uh, you know, we got to be careful, you know, we got to, we got to watch out. And, and uh, also the same with, you know, when even praising God, sometimes we're just looking for ourselves, for our feeling and how we want to worship God, as opposed to coming together and just worshiping God because he's God. Amen. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's coming together in that heart of worship and just understanding the words that we're singing. Because what if we're singing some words that are not godly? Amen. <laughs> but because it's in church, we're like, oh, yeah, it's church. So it's, yeah, this is holy. Amen. 
And you, you know, little do you know, we're blaspheming, amen? So we got to be careful. We got to be watchful. And we got to be, you know, we can't just be run by the emotions. We have to be led by his spirit. Praise God. But it's through that as we focus on him that he starts to do that work. Because as we pour out, he pours right back in. And he just continues that flow through us, amen? So it's just such a blessing and an honor and a privilege to be able to praise and worship God together. And let's continue to do so, amen? No matter where you're at, you know, if you do, if you sing in the car, if you at home or just wherever you're at don't worry god's not looking for our tone he's looking for the heart amen but believe me in that heart of worship he'll give you the tone he'll give you the tune he'll give you the key amen and he'll lead you in that praise and worship uh, so don't be afraid to worship god don't be afraid to praise god don't be afraid to sing unto the lord and if he gives you a new song start to sing it amen start to sing it amen start to declare those words amen start to just declare that scripture that word and start to sing it unto the lord there's nothing like it come on we could sing the abcs right oh, all right I mean, it's not all of you right come on right so how come we can't sing scripture amen can we, we can't put a tune to the scripture and sing it out loud praise god we'll, we'll remember it better because i tell you i wouldn't remember my abcs if it wasn't for that song right Amen. I, and, and somebody said one time, try to do the EBCs without the song. And I don't think I can. So I need the song. I need the rhythm. Amen. So, you know, it's just such a powerful thing. So let me encourage you. Keep praising God. Amen. So just a couple of quick announcements for this week. Uh, we do have Wednesday night Bible study as we're continuing in the book of Revelation. We've been in the seven churches. So I'm sorry, I don't remember which church is this Wednesday, but it's one of the churches, amen, in chapter 3, and it's Philadelphia. Okay, Brother Oscar's up this, uh, this Wednesday, so it's Philadelphia, amen, and that'll be here in the annex room at 7 o'clock, so feel free to join us. You know, we're going through that, and it's just been such a blessing. We started in chapter 1, now we're in chapter 3, and I believe we, next year, we may still go all the, continue in the book of Revelation, amen, so we're studying, we're growing together, we're getting connected, and it's just such a blessing, and all the input and everybody's putting in together, so thank you for that, and uh, if you're not able to join join us here feel free to join us online um, we're also we also live stream it on wednesday nights and uh, it's just such a blessing so you know um thank god for that friday night no prayer but um sunday we're resuming service next sunday does everybody remember what next sunday is yes. amen christmas. christmas potluck amen praise the lord hallelujah <laughs> So, you know, we love that spiritual food, but we also love that physical food. Amen. So we're going to be coming together to celebrate together. And uh, that'll be next Sunday um, at the 1045 service. There will be no prayer in the morning. Doesn't mean you don't pray on your own time, but, you know, we won't have prayer here in the morning. Um, but we will we'll be meeting over here at the 1045 service next door. So we encourage you bring somebody with you and let's just come together in fellowship. Amen. And enjoy the time together. Uh, the following Sundays for Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, we will have service. Um, but they will be 10 a.m. services, okay? So mark your calendars for New Year's Eve and Christmas Eve. Our service time will be at 10 a.m. I know you guys got plans or maybe you got plans or, you know, whatever you got planned. But maybe I got plans. I don't know. But you know what? 10 a.m. on Sunday morning on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. So there will be no 915 service those, those mornings, but there will be the 10 a.m. So just remember to try to remember that. Amen. So 10 a.m. service. Amen. What time is the service on Christmas Eve? 10 a.m. New Year's Eve? 10 a.m. Amen. Next week? 10 <laughs> All right, 1045. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I was trying to remember. Amen. Thank you guys. So, And if, if somebody's not here today, then just let them know. Um, and we'll continue to announce it, but also announce it next week at the potluck as well. So for those that are not here today or maybe they're joining us online today, they can get that as well. Amen. So tell somebody. Amen. So we're look, definitely looking forward to that and just grateful to the Lord. So we're going to pray for the tithes and offerings this morning and just thank the Lord for his faithfulness. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this day. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. We thank you for this time together today, Lord. And we just look to you, Lord Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you for taking care of us, Lord, in our provisions. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love, your grace, and your mercies, for your joy, your peace, and your comfort. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done and will continue to do, Lord. Lord Jesus, for this truly is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So today, Father, as we give, Lord, we don't give, Father God, under Father pressure or manipulation. Lord, we 
give with a cheerful heart today, Lord. As Father God, Lord, we give unto you because, Lord Jesus, we are thankful and know that it all comes from you, Lord. Father, we thank you today, Lord Jesus, for your provisions. And Lord, for those today, Lord Jesus, that are just asking for wisdom, Lord, in the finances, Lord. How to manage them. How to, Father God, Lord Jesus, to pay off debt, Lord. How to not get into debt, Lord Jesus. And how to live within means, Lord, and be content where we're at, Father. Lord, we know that you're able to help all of us in that, Lord. But Lord, we just have to have a willingness to come to you, Lord. And let that also, that area, also the joy in being able to give unto you, Lord. Knowing that, Father, we can never outgive you, Lord. Because, Lord Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is, Father, there's plenty, Lord. So we just thank you today for the work. We thank you for the time together here today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can give our tithes and offerings there in the box back there or at Zell New Living Way Church at gmail.com. Amen. So that's also on there as well. And uh, so today we have a, a ble- we're, we're, we're able to be part of a blessing today. We have a baby dedication. So we're dedicating a couple of children today. Amen. So I'm going to ask up uh, Thomas to come on up. And Monica, with your kids today, amen? And we're going to come together as a church, and we're going to be dedicating the kids today, amen? This is Thomas and Monica, amen? And then we have Ava and Grace, right? Okay, okay, amen. So this is Grace? This is Grace. Grace right here. Grace is right here, and Ava is right here, amen? Well, we just want to say it's an honor and a privilege to be able to be a part with you guys and to be able to, to bless them and to pray for them and, and to give them unto the Lord. You know, as we met the other day, we got to meet the other day, sit down and talk. We're actually still waiting for your mom to get here right that day. She <laughs> says, <laughs> but, you know, it's been a blessing and just an honor and a privilege to be able to do so. Not only that, they're moving to Kansas City going tomorrow, amen? So we're also going to pray and bless you guys as well for that. But it is just such a beautiful thing to be able to bring the kids to the Lord in honor of that. You know, we're not baptizing them, but we're dedicating them unto the Lord. And they're committing, they're choosing to say, Lord, here they are. They're yours before they are ours. And it's just a blessing to be able to know that because you know that what you can't do for them, he can. He can protect them. He can watch over them. He can be with them. Not only that, he, he's the one that created them. He's the one that has a plan and a purpose for them, just as he has for your guys' life as well. So as you're doing this today, you guys are also acknowledging that, and we're coming together and acknowledging with you guys today. But not only that, to also keep you guys in prayer, you know, to help you through the times of parenthood, of, you know, family and just togetherness, you know, and, and uh, you know, and, and also in their lives as they will grow up and they will make their own decisions. But, you know, you gave them an opportunity to know the Lord. And that is an awesome thing because that is a great gift to give a child an opportunity to know God for themselves. Because they will one day come to an age where they will have to make that decision to follow Christ on their own. You know, but if we as parents can give them that opportunity to say, hey, there is another way. Show them the right way. Teach them the right way. Let them see that in you guys as well. And those that will be coming alongside of you. You know, that's such a blessing in that. So, you know, I know that we have, they have, they have some godparents that are not able to be here today. But, you know, that they would be, oh, there we go. Oh, come on up. Yeah, come on up, godparents. They're going to come on up too. Yeah, there we go. Amen. Come on up. You guys are, you guys got responsibility too. Amen. Amen. So as the godparents, you know, you both have that responsibility as well to encourage them, to lead them in the ways of the Lord, to pray for them, and also to support the parents as well. That no matter what, they will always have an opportunity to know God, to be able to, to know that they can come to you guys for prayer, but not only you, but they can also come to you guys for prayer, for encouragement, and know that you will always point them in the way of the Lord. You know, and that is such a blessing in that. So you're not alone in this. You have others behind you guys, serving with you guys and looking after your kids as well and coming to the Lord for it. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and pray for you guys together. We're going to anoint them with oil and anoint you guys with oil and, uh, and just entrust them to the Lord today. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask that we would all extend our hands this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this family today, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, Lord, that they are all fearfully and wonderfully made in your precious thoughts towards them outnumber the grains of sand. We thank you today, Father God, as you have placed it in their heart to honor you, Lord Jesus, with their children, Father God, as they bring them before you today, Father God, and trusting you, Lord Jesus, to look after them, to take care of them, to guide them and to lead them in the plan and purpose that you have for their lives, Father. Father God, Father God, what a great way, Lord Jesus, to be able to do so, Lord, because, Lord, we know 
that, Father God, you can do far more abundantly than they could ever dream or imagine for their children's lives. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you today as you direct their footsteps and all that they do, Father God. We thank you for your love, for your grace, and for your mercies. We thank you for your joy and your peace and your comfort. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that there is no other like you, Heavenly Father. And we stand together as a church today, Lord, standing in agreement with with them today. Father God, believing and knowing that your plan and purpose for their lives is for good and not for evil, to give them hope and a future, Lord God. And Lord, we come together today, Lord, as witnesses, but also as brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, that we will also stand in agreement in prayer for them, Lord. As Father God, they start this new journey, as they, Father, move to Kansas City, as they prepare to travel tomorrow, thank you that you go before them, that you go with them, that you will never leave them and you will never forsake them, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, Lord Jesus, for just establishing a home, a job, finances, Lord Jesus, a church. Father God, leading them to the right place. And Father God, Lord Jesus, but most of all, just thank you that you are with them, Lord. And we just bless them this day, Father. And we thank you, Lord, as we come in agreement today in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Father God, for the daughter today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, my God, as Lord, they bring her unto you today. Father God, you know all things. You knitted her in her mother's womb. And today, Father God, we thank you that, Lord, it is your plan and purpose for her that, Father God, will prevail. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your covering. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for health in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We thank you for strong bones, my God. We thank you for a strong heart. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for a strong mind, Lord. And we thank you for a strong walk in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, Father, for your daughter here today. As, Lord, we come together today, Lord. Lord. Father God, Lord Jesus, thank you that you have been with her and you knew her before the foundations of the world, my God. You predestined her, Lord. You chose her, my God. You've anointed her, my God. And we thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that she does not need to fear because you are with her, my God. So in the name of Jesus, Lord, Father God, as you speak to her heart, as you remind her and show her who you are, as she is able to hear you, Father. Father God, Lord, thank you that she will not need to fear, as you told Samuel, to speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And Lord, we thank you that you have given her ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking. And Father, in the name of Jesus, may she not be afraid or discouraged, but may she rejoice, Father, because Lord, you have given her words, Lord like a two-edged sword, my God. And though it's still being refined, and though, Father God, Lord Jesus, <clears throat> there will be work that you will do through her life. But thank you, Lord, for today, Lord Jesus, her parents are trusting you with her, Lord. And we thank you for that beautiful work you are doing in and through her lives. As Father God, we commit them both unto you today. Thank you for Father God, their mother today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the work that you were doing through her life. Thank you, Father God, Lord Jesus, for your wisdom and your truth. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for just reminding her, Lord, that your plan and purpose for her never changed. And that, Father God, you are able, Lord. Father God, who can stop the Lord Almighty from the work that you begin in her, Lord Jesus, from long ago, my God. You have still been so faithful to her, Lord. And Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that, Father, she is able to rejoice in her life today because of you. And Lord, right now, we just thank you for your peace, for your comfort, and for your strength. Oh, we thank you right now for Thomas. We thank you, Father God, Lord, as he is taking this role and stepping in. Father God, Lord Jesus, to this family as a father, as a husband, as a leader, Father God, as a man of God. Thank you, Father God, that you have equipped him. And Lord Jesus, when Father God, he doesn't have the wisdom or just has his own questions or his own doubts. Thank you that you will remind him that he's not alone, Father, but that you are with him and that you would teach him, Lord how to call on you, how to just continue, Lord Jesus, to seek you. 
For Lord, he doesn't have an issue or calling on you, but Lord, there's certain things, Lord, in certain ways and areas, Lord, that he'll find himself in, that Lord, he's going to need to know how to get just to, just to get to you, Lord. But you're always there with him. So we just thank you right now, Father, for the mantle, for the grace, for the love, for the joy, for the wisdom. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the fear of the Lord. Oh, for the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord. And Lord Jesus, we just thank you right now, Father. Father, we thank you right now, Lord Jesus, for the godparents this day. Thank you, Father God, Lord Jesus, they stand alongside the parents. Thank you, Father God, that they will intercede on behalf of this family. Lord Jesus, that they will stand in the gap, Lord. And that when they come to remembrance, so they think about them, Lord, that they're going to pray for them, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord God. That Father God, Lord Jesus, their love for them, Lord, is great. And Lord, we just thank you right now, Father, just for touching, Lord Jesus, your daughter, your servant right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Because Father God, her feet are firmly standing on a solid ground, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for the willingness to say yes. Father God, at times, Lord, it could be, well, I don't know, that's, that's a lot to ask. But thank you, Lord Jesus, for she is an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Father God, for taking care of her, Lord. Because, Father God, Lord Jesus, Lord, you've called her to be a servant. And, Lord, she has put many others in front of her, Lord, before herself, Lord. Because that's who she is, Father. She has your heart. And as hard as it may be at times, Lord. Lord, you give her strength and you give her comfort through it, Lord. So, Father, thank you that she will always be here for this family and these children, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that you will take care of her through it, Lord. And in all that she learns, she will pass on to them, Lord, to help them so that they can grow together, Lord. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for that knowledge, for that wisdom through it all, Lord, because you take what was meant for evil and use it for the good. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, we just praise you right now, Lord, and we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you guys like to say anything? or? Loving my girls unconditionally and phone call away. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Anything you Thomas wants to say anything? Eh? <laughs> yeah, I would just uh, thank you. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, I really feel blessed to be here and to have my girls dedicated. And it'll be a great memory to have once we carry on our, our walk with Jesus. So I really appreciate everybody being here today. Amen. We, we're, we're privileged to be a part with you guys. We can clap. Amen. We're privileged to be a part with you guys. And here are the certificates for Ava. And this is also for, here we go. And this is for Grace. Amen. Amen. On this day here. So it has their godparents' names and everything on there. Amen. No problem. Definitely, definitely. Well, thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of it. Okay. And we'll also be praying for you guys as well. Amen. Amen. I told him, even though he's a Chiefs fan, we're okay. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Well, let's give the Lord some praise this morning. Amen. He is such a good God and just it's such an honor and a privilege to be a part with the family, you know, and uh, we were asked to do so. So I said, yeah, sure. We'll definitely be a part. You know, last baby dedication we had was Ryder. Amen. So that was a, that was a blessing, you know, so, and we're believing for a lot more. Amen. We're believing for a lot more and amen. What does the Bible say? Be fruitful. <laughs> Amen. Well, praise God. Well, grateful to the Lord this morning. Rich kids rooted in Christ, you are dismissed. So we do have class today. So, and uh, I just have a short message today. Amen. Just about three hours. So we should be out of here by three today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, praise God. Will you guys enjoy your class? Enjoy the time. The Lord has some good, some good word. 
And for all of us that are staying in today, let's turn our Bibles this morning to Jeremiah chapter 9. Amen. We're going to turn our Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 9. And we're going to look at verse 23 to 24. Jeremiah chapter 9. We're going to look at 23. Actually, we're going to look at 23 through 26 this morning. It's okay. She can stay. That's okay. No, no worries. No worries. She can stay with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're going to be in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 to 26. And I'm going to go ahead and read this here. It says, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let him boast, let him who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will punish all those who are circumcised merely in the flesh. Egypt, Judah, Edom, the sons of Ammon, Moab, and all who dwell in the desert, who cut the corners of their hair. For all these nations are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your word today, Lord. And Lord, we just ask you today, Father, that you would bring forth your word, Lord Jesus, and what you are saying, not my own words, but yours, Lord. But also, Father, I ask you, Lord, that today we would receive your word for what you are speaking to us, Lord. Not what we think you're saying, but what you are truly saying today, Lord. But we know that we could only receive these words, Lord, by your spirit today. We ask you, Father God, to let it produce the fruits, Lord, that you intended it to do so, Lord, as you send it forth today. And we just thank you, Father God, for this time together, Lord, as we trust you, Lord, and we look to you, our God, our King, our Savior. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So we're going to look at this scripture today, and it's kind of like a little two-part here, but it's all in the same thing. But I want to look at verse 25 through 26 real quick before we get back to the first part, which is 23 and 24. And it says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will punish all those who are circumcised merely in the flesh. Egypt, Judah, Edom, the sons of Ammon, Moab, and all who dwell in the desert, who cut the corners of their hair, for all these nations are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in heart. So he's talking about a people who are only religious, that are only holy or creeping tradition on the outside, but not on the inside. And this has to do, and we're going to go there, we're going to turn here to Genesis chapter 17. And we're going to look at what God tells Abraham and what, what is going on here regarding the circumcision. Genesis chapter 17, we're going to look at verse 9 through 14. And it says, And God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be, un shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male throughout your generations, whether born in your house or bought with your money from any foreigner who is not of your offspring, both he who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money shall surely be circumcised. So shall my covenant be in your flesh an everlasting covenant any uncircumcised male who was not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin shall be cut off from his people he has broken my covenant so when God gave this to Abraham for the children of Israel he gave it as a sign of a covenant it was an outward expression of the covenant that God had made with Israel a promise that he made to them that he would bring the Messiah to them that he would be faithful to them that no matter what they went through he would always be there for them that they can call on him at any time and he would turn to them even if they walked far off which when you read the Old Testament you see many times they walked away from God but God was always there to hear their cries, to turn to them, to hear from them. And honestly, I mean, I can relate. How many of us in our walk with the Lord many times find ourselves like we feel like we're way out here? <laughs> but yet God is still there. He's still hearing us. He's still listening to us. Why? Because He is faithful to the covenant. He is faithful to the covenant that He has made with me and you. And so right here, He is talking to them about them not being faithful to the covenant to Him. He's saying, you do the circumcision, but yet your heart turned far from me. You have an uncircumcised heart. So they're doing all their traditions. 
They're following what they're supposed to do, but spiritually, they were dead. Spiritually, they were far from God. See, we can do all the right things. We can go to church, we can read our Bible, we can feed the homeless, we can do all these great things, but it is nothing without a relationship with Christ Jesus because that's what God is concerned with. That's what God wants. And it's in that relationship that we find ourselves doing things for others. We find ourselves loving Him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength and loving our neighbor as we do ourselves. See, because the issue is when we don't do this from the heart, when we don't do it in a heart and the love of God, we start to find ourselves that now this becomes our satisfaction. Oh, well, I went out and did this today with the church. Whoo, I feel good today. Oh, I prayed for somebody today. I feel good today. Chick. Got another point on my resume with God. Amen. And it starts to become about us. It starts to become about recognition. It starts to become about, well, you know, look at so-and-so, look at him, look at her. Man, he's a mighty man of God. Man, she's a mighty woman of God. Oh, yes, I am. Thank you. Glad you noticed. <laughs> because, but it's not about that. Because it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about him. I can't save anyone and neither can you, but he can. I can't heal anyone. But He can. I can't deliver anyone, but He can. I can't watch over your kids, but He can. He is faithful. He is good, and He knows all things. So He is telling this people, there is coming a day that I will bring into judgment, I will bring these things to light. Those who are only circumcised in the flesh... Those that are only circumcised by a physical ritual. Those who are boasting about the religion, but not about the committed relationship. Well, we did this today. We did that today. What did you do? And I want to bring it more to today, right? Because I, I, we always read that word boasting, right? In the Bible, boasting and boast. Don't boast in this, boast in the Lord, all these, right? But I look at it like bragging. Because that's the word I grew up with, right? You're bragging. And as a guy, growing up, we bragged about everything. Even if it wasn't true, we were going to brag about it. Women, you have your own ways of bragging. You got your own bragging rights. <laughs> but there's always a case because it's just, it, it feels good. You know what? And I made up a lot of stuff that I bragged about that I never did. But it made me feel good. It made me feel tougher. It made me feel, you know, like, man, I'm one of the guys. Because it becomes about me and you. And he's telling them, don't brag, about, don't brag about your religion. That's like us bragging about, man, I'm saved. I'm redeemed. Man, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Sucks to be you. <laughs> it was a TV show I was watching and the woman finds out that the man is a Christian and she's upset with him. And he says, why are you upset with me? He says, well, you should be concerned that I'm going to hell. And he says, yeah, that's too bad. Later on, he sees a newspaper and he's like, hey, where's our newspaper? They sold it. They must have stolen it. He goes, why don't you grab that one? She says, no, why don't you grab it? He goes, come on, you know where you're going. <laughs> he was just boasting about it. And sometimes we can find ourselves in that place. We're so excited that we're saved, but yet we don't care about others. Instead, we point out what is wrong with others. We point out what they're doing because I'm no longer doing that. Instead of helping them, instead of encouraging them, instead of showing them love, we end up showing them judgment and condemnation. But that comes from a place, from an uncircumcised heart. It's because we be made it about tradition or religion instead of people. Instead of about God. And this is what God was warning the people of Israel about. He says, you're bragging. You have all these bragging rights about everything I've done for you. About all the things you do. But you're not showing love. 
And this is what concerned God more than anything. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 10. I'm going to read verse 12 to 22. He says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord with your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord, which I am commanding you today for your good. Behold, to the Lord your God belong heaven and the heaven of the heavens, the earth with all that is in it. Yet the Lord set his heart and love on your fathers and chose their offspring after them. You above all peoples as you are this day. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no longer stubborn. For the Lord your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great, the mighty and the awesome God who is not partial and takes no bribe. There's no favoritism with God. He sees everyone the same. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. Love the sojourner. Therefore, for you were sojourners in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. And by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God who has done for you these great and terrifying things that your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down to Egypt, 70 persons. And now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars of heaven. He's letting them know, you didn't do this, I did it through you. You went into Egypt with 70 people, now your your descendants outnumber the stars of heaven. You came out blessed. You came out multiplied, but you didn't do it, he did it. I didn't save myself, you didn't save yourself, Christ did it. But it's because of faith. And the only one that can save others around us today is Christ. So that's why we got to allow them to see Christ. But it comes down to our heart. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 4. We're going to look at verse 3 through 4. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem... Break up your fallow ground and sow not among the thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Remove the foreskin of your hearts, O men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my wrath go forth like fire and burn with none to quench it because of the evil of your deeds. I wrote here, he is not concerned with great actors that we can be at times. You know that God is not impressed with how good of actors we can be? (laughs) I told you many years ago, my wife, she was up here preaching and she was talking about hypocrite, you know, being a hypocrite, right? I hope she, she might have been talking about me. I don't know at that time, you know. (laughs) But she says, I want, I wish that was one day I could just come up here and just hand out a bunch of awards for what great actors we can be in the church sometimes. And when she did that, man, I saw myself grabbing one. I was like, I shouldn't be grabbing one, man. But I saw it as the Lord ministering to my heart because it still sticks with me to this day. And that's what it means to be a hypocrite, to be a play actor. To be someone who is acting the part, but in their heart doesn't really believe it. See, God's not looking for good actors. He's not looking for us as people to show like, oh, look how great I am or look what a good Christian I am. He's not impressed of how much we know. He's not impressed with how strong we are. He's not impressed about how much we have. He's not impressed with any of that. He says, if you're going to boast, if you're going to brag, he says it here, thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast or brag in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast or brag in his might. Let not the rich man boast or brag in his riches. But let him who boasts or brags boast and brag in this. That he understands and knows me. 
that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I did delight, declares the Lord. He says, you're going to brag about something? Brag that you know me. Amen. Brag that you understand me. Brag, uh, brag about my steadfast love. Amen. Brag about my justice. Brag about my righteousness in the earth. For he that knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Brag about that. Brag about how God delivered you. Brag about how God saved you. Brag about how God loves you. Brag about how God is so patient with you. Brag about how loving God can be and how his love has never failed you. If you're going to brag about something, brag at the fact that you know me, he says. So the question is today, what are we bragging about today? What are you and I bragging about today in our conversations? When we're talking with family, when we're talking about friends, who are we bragging about? You know, the man that went up for prayer, the two men that went up for prayer, right? The two men in the temple, one a righteous, pious man. He goes over there and he says, man, Lord, thank you that I'm not a sinner, that I don't do this, that I don't do that. And thank you, Lord, that I'm not like this guy. <laughs> I'm the this guy. The one who came before God, couldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven, said, forgive me for I'm a sinner. And Jesus asked the Pharisees and those that were challenged him, said, who do you think left more justified? The man who was already justified in his own heart or the man that couldn't even look up to heaven? See, it's a matter of being willing to lay it down. You know, I thought about this the other day and I started to really think about it in the way I talk. And it kind of, it brought some joy to my heart. Because there was a time that every other word was, had an, started with an F for free. And I'm not saying anything about that in, in general. But just the way I talked, my demeanor, the anger inside of me, the hate that had consumed me. I was mad all the time. Even if I didn't show it, but inside there was just an ugliness from unforgiveness. And today I, I've caught myself a couple of times and I'm pretty sure you can do the same and you can brag about it. That there, a lot of conversations always end up being, but you know what? But thank God, glory to God. You know what? But I thank God that he was with me. Whether they believe or they don't believe, but it always points to God. Even when I don't feel like it, even when, you know, whatever going on, but it always comes down to God. And it's not a matter of feeling safe, it's, but it's a matter of the relationship. Because God is a part of my life. He is my life. And when He becomes a part of your life, then all of a sudden He starts to become a part of your conversation. He starts to become a part of the way you talk and how you talk. And how you respond. And I thank God for that because you know what? I can brag that I know Jesus. Amen. You want to ask your neighbor, do you know Jesus? You ask your neighbor, do you know Jesus? <laughs> and if you say yes, then yes, you can brag about it. I know Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, it's funny, I shared with Letty, and I wasn't going to share this, but I'm thinking about it right now. You know, last night was kind of tough. I slept good, don't get me wrong. I don't let anything mess with my sleep, man. <laughs> anything mess me up, I get up in the name of Jesus, get the hell out of here. I'm just tired, man. I'm like, you messing with my sleep. But I was having these dreams, and it was like, it was like right before you get up. You know, it's not even in the middle of the night. It's like right before you get up. So you're like trying to get those extra 10 minutes. But every time you go to sleep, it's like, bam, you get another dream. And I'm like, man, messing me up. I'm trying to enjoy these last 10 minutes I got. And it was like three of them crammed into one. And I'm like, man, it was messing me up. And I told Letty it had to do with the praise and worship today as we we're filling in. And, 
And it was like every time we tried to get started, something would happen and we couldn't get started and we couldn't play. And all of a sudden the service was like out of order and everything was just like, there was just so much commotion and so something kept happening that wasn't allowing the praise and worship to go through. And there came the last dream that I had was all these like famous people coming in. And because every time somebody famous would walk in, every oh my God, and everybody, so service would stop. So we weren't able to start playing. And the last one that walked in was Stevie Wonder. Is he still alive? <laughs> I don't know. Stevie Wonder walked in. And everybody's like, oh, it's Stevie Wonder. And all of a sudden, again, the service is not starting. And I'm like waiting till Stevie Wonder gets seated. I don't know why it was Stevie Wonder. Maybe I have to pray for him. Amen? Because he wonders. <laughs> that was good. I don't know why, but yeah, that's a good one. I could be it. And I'm like, why Stevie Wonder? So I had to wait. And then finally, when everybody was okay and on there and all that stuff, then we were going to get played. And that's when I had to wake up. And I'm like, man, what was that about? But then as I was talking to Letty on the way here, and we were, I, was, I was sharing with her, I thought about it. I said, you know what? It was a reminder. It doesn't matter who comes. It's a matter. It's unto you. No matter how big the name, no matter how great the star, there is no one greater than Jesus. It was a reminder that I'm not, it's not about... Who, it's not about the celebrity status. It's not about the political status. It's not about the financial status. It's about Jesus. It is about Jesus. And that's who the worship and that's who the praise and that's who has to be the focus. So I said, Lord, we're here to just here to praise you, God. We're here to seek you. We're here to glorify you, Lord Jesus. And whether Stevie wonders out there or not, he's... Not watching, but listening with us today. Praise God. But it's not about Stevie Wonder. It's about Jesus. Amen? Yeah. It's about Jesus. And I know you're wondering who else was in the audience. I don't remember. But it was, I know Stevie Wonder was there. Because it has to be a matter of the heart. Are we excited today because we know Jesus? That's what we should be bragging about. Is the fact that me and you get to know Jesus. But see, because we're no longer under circumcision. We're no longer under that law. Let's go to Luke chapter 22. It's got a couple more scriptures here. Fourteen to twenty, he says, and when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me and likewise the cup after they had eaten saying this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood Amen. that is the new covenant today what Jesus Christ did for me and you. What Jesus Christ did for the world. And because we put our faith in him today, we can know and trust that he is faithful to that covenant. Yes, amen. And even when, we're not un even when we're unfaithful, he still remains faithful. Amen. That's how good he is. He's patient. He's long-suffering. But how did we get there? Let's go to Romans chapter 10. Verse 8 through 13 says, but what does it say? The word is near you in your heart and your mouth. I mean, the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. 
That is the word of faith that we proclaim because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses and saved. For the scripture says everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yesterday I did a funeral service and, you know, the family had asked me to bring a word and, and to share. And I usually, you know, the Lord leads, I open it up for the, for the salvation call. But one of the things I always say is that if you say this prayer and you believe it in your heart, your life will never be the same. But I encourage them and let them know this isn't a magical prayer. <laughs> it's a prayer of faith. But if you believe it in your heart, you'll never be the same. Because you've allowed God to come and to change your heart. Because that's what truly matters. Yes. In this service, the woman who passed away had dementia. And she went home to be with the Lord. Awesome testimony of how God saved her. And I was able to share that. With those that were there with us yesterday. But one of the things that really stood out to me is when it was shared with me. That even in her dementia. She was still crying out to God. She never forgot about God. Because even though her mind was gone going away, even though her body was shutting down, but her heart was strong as ever. Think about it this way. In, they, they can't remember in dementia, you can't remember the, those people closest to you. But because of the God in her heart, she was able to remember to call on the Lord. She was able to cry out and God help me. God save me. God, I need you right now. That really ministered to me because that just showed me that, Lord, it's not dependent on how much knowledge, how strong or what I have. But, Lord, because you're in my heart, no matter what, I know you got me. You have her and he has you today. Amen. So even if the body starts to fail, even if the mind starts to fail, your heart won't fail in Christ. Amen. Amen. Because he has you. Because it's a matter of knowing him. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 18 through 31. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. That's me. But God chose what is weak in the world to shape the strong. Shame the strong. That's me too. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not to bring to things that are. That are so that no human being might boast or brag in the presence of God. And because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, let the one who boasts, let the one who brags, brag in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Because that's what we're able to do today. We're able to brag in the Lord that what he did for me and you, and I'm not saying that you, many of you might be highly intellectual, but our intellect compared to God's is nothing because he knows all things. Our strength compared to God's is nothing compared to him. I know my wife is stronger than me, but she's not stronger than God. Amen. But she is strong. She's a strong woman physically. Physically. <laughs> 
<laughs> and spiritually, amen? I don't arm wrestle her, man. I don't want her bragging. <laughs> what are you bragging about today? Are we bragging that we know the Lord? We can call it a humble brag. John 17, 3 says this, this is eternal life. To know God the Father and to know His Son, Jesus Christ. If this is what we are bragging about, then we can live content, a content life for the purpose of God's will. Knowing that His will is above all else. And I'm going to close with this scripture here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 through 6. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace, with which He has blessed us in the Beloved. See, God's purpose for you is good. And when we're able to come to the place that, you know what, I know Christ. But it's not so much a place of, well, I know Christ and you don't, but it's a place that we can let others know that they can know Christ. That they can have the same relationship that me and you can have. Many people brag about many things today, and it's things that me and you can have. But Christ is for everyone. Salvation is for everyone who chooses to believe. The next time you feel down, remember, you know Christ. You know Jesus. You have all that you need in Him. I read this quote from Daddy Yankee. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him. <laughs> he recently gave his life to the Lord. And he said, living a life of success is not the same of living a life of purpose. When you could live a life of purpose, you know that it's a life that matters because that purpose influenced so many others around you. A life of success is just something that people try to attain. But a life of purpose impacts the lives of those around you. And in Christ, know that because you know Him today, your life is filled with purpose. And that purpose is affecting and influence others, influencing others around you. And whether you see it at times or not, but because you believe it, that He says, I know the plans and the purposes that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you hope in the future. He spoke that to Israel in captivity. He spoke that to Israel in a time when they were far from God. He spoke that in a time where Israel was shaking their fist at God because they were overcome by Babylon. But yet God said that in that time, he says, but yet I still know the plans that I have for you. They have not changed. And sometimes we can look back and say, man, I've lost so many years. Oh man, that means the plan of God has changed for me. No, it hasn't. <laughs> Because you didn't realize that even through that time, he was still working out his plan and purpose in your life, in my life. Because he's able to take that and use it for the good. For his good. To bring him glory. Because that's how good God is. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty from the work that he began in your life and that he is faithful to finish? Who can stop the Lord Almighty from bringing you through that valley? Who can stop the Lord Almighty from bringing you over that mountain? Who can stop the Lord Almighty from bringing you through the fire? Who can stop the Lord Almighty from bringing you through the waters? Who can stop the Lord Almighty from remaining faithful to you? From loving you? His word says nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. He loves you. He loves me. He loves this world. And that love will never change. So 
So next time you feel you don't have something to brag about, remember, you know Jesus. You're not in lack. You're not in want. He's got you. He'll take care of you. He'll cover you. He'll protect you. He'll provide for you. Just trust him. Because you know him today. And keep living your life knowing that it's a purposeful life. I know there's a movie called It's a Wonderful Life. But we have a purposeful life. Because there's a reason and purpose for it. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you this day. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you for this time together. We thank you, Father God, just for reminding us today, Lord God. Lord, that we're able, Lord Jesus, to know you today. But most importantly, you know us, Lord. But Father, today we ask you, Lord, that help us, Father God, Lord Jesus, not to be ashamed or to hold back, Lord, in talking about you and declaring you, Lord, or just mentioning your name, Lord. Because, Father God, that is the power of you, Lord. The fact that we have a committed relationship with you today, Father God, and that, Lord Jesus, we can look to you, Lord, and that you come up in our conversations and that, Lord, we're always in the direction and pointing things towards you, Lord, to give you the glory. Because, Lord, we know it's because of you. And, Lord, we're not going to dim that light, but, Lord, we're going to allow that light to shine even brighter, Lord, so that others can see, so that others can know you, Lord, so that others can be drawn to you, Father. But, Lord, we need your help, Lord. Father God, forgive us, Lord, if we have found ourselves in areas, Lord, that we have a hardened heart or an uncircumcised heart. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, for seeking after other things to fulfill our lives, Lord, when, Lord, in you we have everything. You teach us, Lord God, how to appreciate the gifts in our life, such as family, Lord, Father, friendship, friendships, Lord, brothers and sisters in Christ, the church. Father God, you teach us how to love, Lord. You teach us, Father God, how to help people, Lord. Not because, Lord Jesus, what we're going to get in return, but just because it's the right thing to do and because we want to, Lord. But Lord, help us as a church. The church is for good, Lord. The church is a beacon, is a light, my God. But forgive us for any ways and all ways, Lord Jesus, that we have made it about other things, Lord. Because, Jesus, the only thing that the church should be showing and declaring and representing is you, Jesus. The Savior, our Lord, our King, the one that saves, Lord. Father, we thank you today, Lord. For helping us in our daily walk, Lord. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we're able to come to you, Lord. And acknowledge these areas of our own hearts to you today. And Lord, we ask you today, Father God. That Lord, we can trust you in the work that you are doing, Lord. And we just thank you for that peace within our hearts this day. Lord, we just love you. We praise you. And we glorify your holy name. And Lord, we just thank you today as we go home or go to eat or wherever we may go today, Lord, that you are with us and that we can rejoice, Lord, that we know you and we understand you. And Lord Jesus, we seek and walk in your righteousness and in your justice, Lord. We thank you this day, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we are dismissed this morning. If you, if you need prayer, we'll still be up here today. Amen. And uh, just looking forward to it. Remember, Bible study Wednesday. Amen. So I encourage you to join us, study with us. Let's grow together. Amen.